this clip, I'm going to look at the relationship between two of the tables in Donegal dentists. In predictor, the clinic table and the appointment table. So I'm going to click on the clinic tab here. It's already open. And we see that there's five clinics numbered 100, 200, 300, 400, and 500. And then there's appointments. So there's appointments held at each of the clinics. We have clinic appointments held at 100 here, the first one, then 200. Later, another one at 100, one at 300, some at 400, 500. So every clinic is hosting at least one appointment. So what we have here in this relationship is a clinic may host zero or many appointments. And each appointment is scheduled at or held at one and only one clinic. So that's the sample data for a moment. So we're going to just close that those two tables and go back and look at the relationships between the, the tables. So to get the relationships, you go to database tools and click on relationships. So already from earlier screencasts, some of the re relationships are already built. So what we've got here is that if we, if we want to look at the status of a relationship, we can just double click on it. So when you double click on a relationship on the relationship line for a dentist and appointment, we see that there's the two common columns are the dent ID and the, and the dentist table. And then in the appointment table, the child table, the dent ID is a foreign key. And we've enforced integrity. But we haven't looked at the cascade update or cascade delete relationships. So we'll just leave that one as, as it is. And similarly for, for patient to appointment, same idea, a patient may have zero or more appointments. And the PAT ID in the patient table is the primary key. And the matching foreign key in the appointment table is PAT ID. So we'll leave that one as it is. And thirdly, same idea again, clinic and appointment. So we have one clinic, that's the one to infinity symbol, one clinic, and then the many appointments. So a clinic may host uh, zero or more appointments. And the relationship that's defined here at the minute uh, has the integrity enforced. Now what we're going to do in a moment is we're going to look at the idea of taking the cascade update uh, settings or the, and the cascade delete settings, one or both of those. So we're going to leave them off at the moment. And so we'll hit the OK button to leave that relationship as it is. So what we've done is we've just uh, chosen the Enforce Integrity option, the Enforce Referential Integrity setting. So we'll OK that. We'll go back now to the two tables. So we'll go back to Clinic and open it. And we look at the Appointment table as well. So as you can see in the Clinic table, we have Clinic 100, 200, 300, 400, and 500. And then the appointment table, every one of those clinics has at least one appointment. So if we go to the clinic table, and we're going to just try and renumber one of my um, one of my clinics. So we'll say rather than calling it 100, we'll call it 111. So clinic number 100 is now going to become a clinic 111. And Access doesn't like that. It says this record can it be deleted or changed. In other words, we're trying to update it here. We're trying to change it. And this this update or change isn't allowed to proceed because the table appointment contains in, includes related records. So what that means is that uh, clinic 100. So we'll just leave it as it is for the minute. Clinic 100 has a um, associated records in the appointment table. So access won't allow me to navigate away from that, it seems, even though it should. So we're going to just close the um, clinic table for a moment. We'll okay that. So we'll close it anyway. So clinic has been closed. Okay, so the, um, the, the table 100, or sorry, the, the clinic 100, sorry, wasn't being allowed to be changed there a moment ago because there's a there's a couple of appointments that involve clinic 100 there's three of them in fact okay so three three appointments are held in of uh, the appointments have been held so far three of them have been held at clinic 100 so that's the barrier to us changing the um the clinic records so what we're going to do is i'm going to close the two tables and look back at the relationship and then i'm going to go in and I'm going to tick one of the other boxes. I'm going to tick this update, cascade update related fields setting. So it's still, the enforced integrity option is still in place. And this is just a variation of it where we can have a cascade effect. So you'll see what the, the cascade effect means in a moment. 
We're going to go back now and look at the two tables again, clinic and appointment. So the in the clinic table is set the primary key. The clinic table is, is, is clinic ID. And the values it calls are 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. In the appointment table, clinic ID is a foreign key. And all the foreign key values um, match up. So the, there's a number of occurrences of 100, which matches the existing row in the, in the clinic table. So there's no problem with that. Same with 200. There's, some, there's a number of, point of appointments scheduled at clinic number 200 and so on. But if I now go back, go back to the clinic table, and this time I try to renumber 100, clinic 100 as 111, and then to kind of test access to see will it save that I navigate away from the record, and access likes the 111, it accepts it. So what does that mean? If we now click on the appointment table, what you'll notice is every row on the appointment table that previously said 100 for the clinic ID now says 111. So the, number, the value 100 no longer is, is visible here. We see 200, 300, etc. But the values that used to be 100 have now become 111. And that's because of this cascade update effect. The cascade, the, 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 the change made to the parent table, the clinic table, when we change the, the value 100 to 111 for the first clinic here in Letterkenny, then because of that uh, box been ticked in the relationship, the appointment table is automatically updated. So hence the, the, the value 111 is immediately repeated here of its own accord. Access does that itself. So I'll just do is I'm going to go back and revert it back to the way it was. So I'm going to go back and make the, the clinic 111. I'm going to renumber it now again as 100. Sorry, not as 199, as 100. And I'm going to go back to the appointment table. And suddenly, the appointment table, the rows I've left as they are, but that maybe that's because I didn't save it. I didn't navigate away from it. That's the problem here. So in the clinic table, I changed the value 111 to 100, but I didn't leave that field or that row. And because I didn't leave that field or that row, access didn't uh, have the, didn't do the knock on work, we'll call it. Access didn't save the change I was making and then didn't, uh, the records in the appointment table looked as they did previously. So they still said 111. But now because I have changed the clinic ID from 111 back to 100 in the clinic table, all of the rows in the appointment table have been updated accordingly. So that's a particular uh, couple of examples of where I went in and changed the value 100 for the clinic ID for the first clinic. That's the, the, the changes then reflected, uh, they, they were further reflected in the appointment table. Um, so 100, and the, the, when I changed 100 to 100, or sorry, yeah, 100 to 111 in the clinic table, the thing cascaded to the appointment table. The clinic ID here also, the clinic ID values for that particular row in the clinic table also took on the value 111. And then the exact same thing happened later on when I reverted back to 100 in the clinic table. The, the data in the appointment table automatically instantly changed without me having to go in and manually change it. So that's the impact of turning on this setting here, cascade update related fields. It means a change to the, in this case, the clinic table, the parent table, will be immediately reflected in the child table, the appointment table. And that's because the relationship has been set up like this. So on a similar train of thought, I'm going to tick the cascade delete option now. So I'm enforcing integrity and I have cascade update and cascade delete both chosen. So I'm going to OK that. And then I'm going to go to the clinic table. Sorry, I'm going to go to the clinic table and open up the clinic table. When I look at the clinic table, there's five rows in it, including row for clinic ID 500. So that's the one I'm going to delete in a moment. So there's currently five records in the clinic table. If I go to the appointment table, there are currently 12 records, 12 rows or 12 records. And one of those appointments has been held at clinic 500. So the question is now, what would happen if I went to the clinic table and deleted the row for clinic 500? Would there be trouble in the appointment table or would this same row for, for um, 
on the 7th of September 98 for a filling it cost 400 euro was paid by debit card so if I delete the the row in the clinic table the row in the parent table does that have any impact on the associated children or in this case the associated child okay so there's there's it the clinic in question 500 in the in the clinic table has one matching appointment in the um, appointment table the fourth or fifth last row there so all the other appointment rows relate to other um, clinics so anyway let's go back to the clinic table and let's highlight the row and try to delete it there's the option to, to delete the record so what does access say it says access here says relationships that specify cascading deletes are about to cause one record in this table along with related records in related tables to be deleted so as you can see this table is the clinic table so i'm going to delete one row on it and it's going to have a knock-on effect on the appointment table so let's hit the yes button and see what happens so as you can now see clinic 500 has vanished from the clinic table when we go to the appointment table what's happened it's marked this row has been deleted so the word deleted is popping is appearing across the entire row so i'll just try and close the table for a moment and come back into the appointment table again and the row i've deleted is now gone it's now vanished from the list so instead of saying 12 records as, as i did a minute ago i now see 11 rows in the um, appointment table so that clip demonstrates what the impact of uh, ticking the cascade uh, delete option or sorry cascade update option first of all in the relationship and secondly hitting the cascade delete option choosing the cascade delete option or enabling the cascade delete option so in both cases when we made a change in the parent table the clinic table when we changed a primary key value the the cascade update turned on or enabled the uh, similar changes met the appointment table and then secondly when we deleted a row from the clinic table that had some of some related appointments or some associated appointments in the appointment table not alone did the row get deleted from the clinic table but the matching rows also got deleted from the um, appointment table so that shows you the impact or the purpose of the cascade update and cascade delete features when we're defining relationships or setting up relationships between two tables in microsoft access and that's the end of the clip